Every year, tons of anime are released. Spring, summer, fall, winter. Show after show. And yet, still, rarely is there ever something worth your time. When you watch a metric ton of anime, you'll start to notice some trends. First, there are a lot of cash grabs just like any other media. I mean, superheroes get merch before their movies are even released. And anime's not much better. Second, the most popular anime are usually high-energy action or comedy shows or whatever else Crunchyroll decides to promote. The heavy exaggeration and wild plots in many anime can help them feel more appealing than live action, but simultaneously can keep anime from reaching older audiences, and those otherwise separated from the hobby. Those out of tune with what anime is can very quickly write off entire shows from one scene. Having all these thoughts made me realize I needed something understated, subtle, to cleanse the people's palates like McDonald's Sprite. Hold my hand, now! It burned! Let's it go. Burned! Burned! Look everyone, we're holding hands! Aka 13 is a perfect stepping stone for new anime viewers. It has a world that lives and breathes as well as the greatest live action TV shows, with a fraction of the view time. Set in the kingdom of Doha, which is split into 13 autonomous states, Aka 13 follows Jean Otis, a member of the eponymous Aka, who is charged with combating corruption within the agency and within the country. He does this by inspecting each of Aka's branches within the 13 states. By following him, we are introduced to every state's highly individualized culture and can begin to piece together the larger mystery of the show, learning what state the government is in, who has control, and where these rumors of corruption really started. As every district gets shown to us, episode by episode, it becomes clear how Akka keeps the country functional, and just how much influence they have. Not a moment of wistful contemplation, nor a speck of dialogue is wasted in this show. And as the tension ebbs and flows, the smooth jazz soundtrack meets every emotion as needed, adding to the classy feeling and giving each scene life. Jean Otis, in tandem with the plot, is a seemingly listless, unflappable person with little to hide. But what is he thinking? Where do his motivations lie? Why is he so dedicated to a job he doesn't need? Aka 13 peels back the layers of depth slowly by showing his habits, his preferences, and his relationships. No immediate flashback detailing how we should all feel sorry for him because he was grown in a lab, turned into a cyborg, and now everyone doesn't like him because he's different. Where was I? It demonstrates who he is by comparing how he acts in different situations and to different people. For instance, there is a difference between his demeanor at work, with his sister, and with his best friend Nino. Nino, much the same as Jean, is unflappable and well-connected. As a journalist, he is one of the few characters that is easily able to travel to every district of the country, for the sake of gathering information for his stories. His parallel character is important, as one of the few people Jean can rely on, he also understands how the other districts work, and can help Jean out of tight spots, or just go drinking with him, peeling back the layers of frustration and weight on Jean's shoulders to reveal his feelings. As for the other characters, perhaps I should let you guys see them. When Madhouse decided to animate a political drama, I imagine they thought, what can we focus on to add a level of visual intrigue? Well, what is everyone like? Food. The food, man, it all looks delicious. The breads, the cakes, the sweets, the meats, all of it is so appetizing. Combine that with the sheer visual diversity of each environment and the people who live within it and the sprinkling of detail about each district's culture and you get a world full of life. The animators and the writers work in tandem to reward the viewer for their time. If you pay attention, the puzzle pieces you pick up can fall into place all at once, creating an expansive picture previously invisible. Aka 13's commitment to its characters does go further than the mystery, though. The character development has little bits of info totally inconsequential to the plot, which breathe life into each individual. Without these small ledges to give your imagination a foothold, 
You couldn't picture characters going anywhere or doing anything mundane or normal. They wouldn't be people. After they leave the screen, they would essentially not exist. Outside of food, Madhouse also puts a lot of work into the color palette and the design of each character and environment. Each district will have its own clothing and distinct landmarks such as picturesque snow-capped mountains, vast grassland, or rustic deserts. With each people group dressing to reflect not only the environment, but the culture that sprung from it. Considering the premise is that they all exist under one larger government, these differences showcase important plot points, such as what each district's main export is, and how much control they wield as a result. Think of it as a miniaturized political experiment, with plenty of parallels to real-world economics and history. I couldn't ask for more from a pure political drama, really. Much of the main cast is multifaceted, the animation is unique and fluid, and the soundtrack is seamlessly integrated into the world. Where it does fall short to me is the final payoff. The whole story builds up to one moment, with a revelation after revelation of true character origins and motivations. But to keep the mystery of how everything will resolve, they hide a plan or two made in the previous episodes. Now, I wouldn't say this is a total fault, as we do see the meetings where these plans happen, but it is not clear what was said in the meeting. Additionally, there are a few fairly influential characters in Akka who could have used more fleshing out, considering their ability to change how the show resolves. These things could be seen as a necessary evil to keep the resolution exciting and the show brief, but I could take it or leave it. Honestly, I enjoyed Akka 13 right through to the end, and it seems Madhouse enjoyed it too, as they released an OVA within the last few years. I'm glad they gave the first season so much love. Hey guys, I don't make videos very often, but when I do, I try to make them as entertaining as possible. Just leave a comment letting me know what you want to see next. Like, subscribe, or else how will you know when I post in four months? All that. Peace.